What is the purpose of jizya according to Islamic scripture? Well, I'm going to show you here what I found. Um, let me see. Yeah, so according to Quran 29, 29, it says here, you fight them until they pay, pay the jizya and fill themselves um, or with willing submission and fill them as a subdued. So, so, so submission is very important. Another hadith here you see, uh, according to Muat Malik, uh, 1746, says the following, zakat is a tax for Muslims, is imposed on the Muslim to purify them um, and to be given back to the, to the poor. And by the way, it's only poor that are Muslims, and I have other hadiths if you guys would want to see this. But let's continue. Whether well, Jesus is imposed on the people of the book to humble them. So we're seeing that it's basically a, um, uh, the same thing shown in different hadith and different verses. Um, and if you go to another passage here, it's Quran 57.25. It's a tafsir by Ibn Kafir. We see the following Muhammad is saying here. The Messenger of Allah said, remember, we are looking for the purpose of jizya. It's not just tax. The Messenger of Allah said, I was sent with the sword before the hour, basically before the judgment day, so that Allah will be worshipped alone without partners. My provision was placed under the shadow of the spear. And those who defy it, basically those who don't want to be Muslims, or are Muslims and are basically Coca-Cola light Muslims, those who defy my order will be disgraced and humiliated. And he who imitates the people of uh, um, people is one of them. Basically, you, you have to be loyal to the Islamic way of life. So it's saying here, basically, if you don't agree with me, you'll be humiliated. And this video is beautiful, it will beautifully illustrate my point. He will tell you exactly what jizya is. Jizya is basically, you got to make sure that you impose this on people, but then there will come life rules. And the point here is that you're going to humiliate them in such a way that the life is so degrading that they will say, hey, this life is not worth living. Let's just convert and become one of them. So here it is. Open Bukhari, you will find the hadith that if you find a Jew or a Christian walking down the street, push them to the side. It is well known from what Umar ibn al-Khattab and the Khulafa al-Rashidin used to implement that the Jew and Christian was not allowed to ride on a horse when the Muslim is riding on the horse. They will have to walk. Allah, he said in the Quran about the jizya that you that fight the people of the book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, it's in the Quran, fight the people of the book and those who do not believe that what Allah has made lawful is lawful and what Allah has made unlawful is lawful until they pay the jizya and feel themselves subdued. The purpose of the jizya is to make the Jew and the Christian know that they are inferior and subjugated to Islam. Okay? In the Muslim state, although the Jew and Christian is free to practice their religion, this is allowed, but they cannot display their cross. And even in the time of Umar, they were not allowed to reconstruct or construct new churches. All of this is to create an atmosphere where the, it is encouraging the people to come to Iman and Islam. <laughs> yeah, I like right, So as you heard, all of this is to create a climate for people to say, hey, this is not worth it. All right. So um, let's now find out what Muhammad himself said. Uh, is the sound working, by the way? Yeah, it's all guys. I just well. want to add. I love how he said, used the word. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> yes, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Like instead of saying forcing them, he say encourage them. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that is new Islamic newspeak. Yeah. Can you hear us? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. My 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 volume was down, so I okay, apologize. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to show, you know, a couple of examples from Muhammad that it, it's not just, you know, evil people doing it, you know, through history because, you know, you should not blame Islam if Muslims use drugs or alcohol. That's them acting on their own desires. So every time that you see Muslim behave in a certain way, you got to match it with Islamic scripture. If it's not in line with that, then they're acting on their own desires. But when they're acting according to scripture, um, that's very Islamic. So in Tirmidhi 3, volume 3, uh, book 19, Hadith 1602, or you can just do 1602. You see the following. Muhammad is saying the following, not me, you know. The Messenger of Allah said, do not proceed the Jews and Christians with a salam. Salam is another word for say, hello, peace be upon you. It's a, it's a nice way to say hello. So don't say that, but if you meet them in the path, basically on the road, you got to force them to the narrow portion. You got to push them. And then it continues saying the following. The Muslims are ordered to humiliate them. And this one is a sahih. Another example, 
Sahih Muslim 1942-94. Fight in the name of Allah and in the name of Allah. Uh, fight those who disbelieve in Allah and make a holy war. And if you just go down in the hadith and say the following. Here's the step how to do it. First you invite them to accept Islam. And before I continue here, you got to know that the first generation Muslims, um, they went from Saudi Arabia, Mecca, Medina up to uh, Syria. They invaded Syria, they invaded uh, Iraq. They invaded Jerusalem, they invaded Lebanon, they invaded um, Egypt, uh, Libya, Morocco. Spain was a little say later, it was around 50 years later. Uh, they went to Iran, Afghanistan. This is the first generation Muslims, you know. So this is how they spread the faith. It wasn't, you know, trying to convince people. They took the sword and says, either you do the following here. So you invite them to accept Islam, first point. If they respond to that, then you accept it from them and you desist from fighting them. Point number two, if they refuse to accept Islam, you demand from them jizya. So here you're saying to them, like the mafia is saying to the restaurant owner, hey, either you join us or oh, you, we take money from you or we're going to kill you. And if they agree that you have to pay, uh, agree to pay, then you accept it from them and withhold your, your hands. And here comes the st third step. If they refuse to pay the tax, they seek Allah's help and fight them. And this Sahih Muslim, as you see the source, another example from Muhammad. Do not even eat with them. He's talking about disbelievers. Abu Sayyid narrated that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Do not accompany the except with the believer. So don't don't be part of them. Don't, do not engage with them unless they are Muslims. And do not serve your food and accept uh, to one of um, to one with taqwa. And taqwa is more piety. Basically, you try to spread Islam and talk about Allah. So that's one way of um, proselytizing." Here's another one. This one is Sahih. Here's another one. This one is Hassan. The Prophet says, um, associate only with the believers and let only God-fearing man eat your meals. Um, I could show this, this clip. Um, you know, I'm actually going to show this clip because it's powerful to yeah, see that these people actually get their ideas from somewhere. Humiliate the Kafir. Why you humiliate the Kafir? Like I said, you never look up to him. You always look down to him. You, you look down to him like that. Hello, can I help you down there? Al Islam a yalu, wala yu la alay. Islam is superior, and it could never be so, uh, surpassed because of Tawheed. It will always elevate you. Yeah, and this is why Al Farooq he said, "Nahlu kawban, nahlu kawban, aiz Allah wal Islam." He said, "We are a kaw who Allah He dignified us with Islam." That's why you always walk with your head up high. Not with takabbar, with arrogance. Yeah, yeah, I'm like this. No, but this type of takabbar is allowed to be proud that you are Muslim. Yes, I worship Allah the highest. <laughs> Look at you. He worshiped the ants. <laughs> he's worshiping the rats. Uh, rats. Uh, this one, he worships his private parts. This one, uh, yeah, he's, a, he's a monkey worshiper, cow worshiper. Oh, he's having a shower, you know, underneath the, underneath uh, Hongobugu, whatever his name is, or <laughs> some stupid animal like that. Nahru Kobo, he said, Nahru Kobo. We are Kobo, Allah dignified us via Islam. And the Kufr, it would humiliate anybody. So to dishonor. So never give your food to any Kafir. And never give my food to any Kafir. That's right. I had some takans, they will come to work for me a couple of months ago. They're going to be coming, some new ones are coming now to work for me soon. We're going to pick them up for about 20 quid a day. Yeah, they came to work for me and they were in the garden. I don't offer none of my food. I sat there in my kitchen, I was eating okay, my chandelier masala. Enough. You get the point, right? Yeah. Um, so you got to make sure you humiliate them. But also in, 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 the, in the eye of the, of the law, it says the following here. So if a Muslim do a crime against non-Muslim, they will not have the same punishment as if a non-Muslim does it to a Muslim. And here is an example here. The judgment uh, that no Muslim should be killed for, I mean, equality in punishment, for killing a kafir, non-Muslim. So basically, it's, it's not, it's, it's apartheid, basically, uh, based on their disbelief. Here's another one by Abu Dawood saying that the value for blood money, blood money is if you kill someone, then the, the, the victim family has the opportunity to say, here, either we get money for you, uh, for killing our family members, or you're going to have the equal punishment. So the the the, the punishment or the blood money for uh, killing of disbelievers uh, can re read the last sentence. It's only half for a, as a as for a Muslim. So it's not equal. It, number one is you got to make sure that you humiliate them, but also in the eye of the law, you you don't have the same same rights and the same punishments. And here's another part uh, of, of of jizya that you need to know. So. Disbelievers have to make sure that they have one way to show to the Muslim that they are not um, Muslims. And one, one way to do that is um, to wear a belt. And that belt is to show um, the Muslim that, hey, he's not one of us. 
we can degrade him and we can make sure that we can mistreat him. And that reminds me of something else in history, in modern history, actually. Yeah. Around 70 years ago, we had Hitler who made sure that the Jews had certain symbols on the clothes to make sure that we could grit, that they could recognize them. Uh, so this belt is called Zunar, for those who have never heard it. Zunar. And you'll find this in Quran 929, you go Tafsir Ibn Kathir, who will explain this. All right, so now, um, in Quran 